Yeah, you know what it is. Sanyika Shakur. That's right. Broadcasting to you live from a new African population district, Southern California. You know, uh, seems that my last broadcast offended some people. If you find yourself offended, you're supposed to be offended because you're on the wrong side of this. Check this out. Shout out to Celeste. I see you, sister. I ain't forgot you. I recognize you. I appreciate you. We all do. You did some wonderful stuff. You're doing some wonderful things. Shout out to Wes. Shout out to Tiny Diamond and his wife, Salam. Good people. My people. My bloodline. Good people. Shout out to G from Florida. That's right, homie. I see you. Shout out to Pac-Man from Florida. That's right. Rocky, I see you. All the homies out there. A Slope, North Carolina, Raleigh. Doing it. Shout out to uh, Takuma Shakur. Shout out to all the people that I didn't shout out before. I didn't intentionally miss you. I got you. Check this out. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about myself. So y'all won't have to go on the internet and find out. Things like that, you know? Because you do those things that uh, will misinform you. I'm going to tell you straight from the horse's mouth. First of all, if you want to know about this Kiwi thing, and Kiwi is Swahili for Crip. Actually, the word is Kiwete. And Kiwete means cripple. And so what we did was we took Kiwete and we took Tay off. And we just said Crip. Kiwi. Like Damu say Damu, which is blood in Swahili. Barigami, Damus. Siki Liza, check this out. You know, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, man. I joined my set, the A Trey Gangsters in 75. I uh, I got criminalized, in fact, and by, by that. I wasn't a criminal before that. Every criminal act I've committed has been in commission in one way or another uh, for the set and for the destruction of our enemies, who we perceived as our enemies at that time. And our enemies come in various fashions, various forms, various degrees. And so uh, when you function in a particular realm, you know, it's easy for you to be misled as to who your enemies are. Your enemy is whoever's doing you the worst harm, whether it's an abuser at home, whether it's the teacher at school, whether it's the pig in the street, or whether it's the dude down the street, you know. So uh, Franz Fanon taught us that, and that's the brother that wrote Wretched of the Earth. He taught us that uh, in colonial situations, colonial people who have colonial mentalities find their greatest form of resistance against their own. And that's just part of the criminal mentality and the colonial mentality. And that's what we fell into in the set in South Central. Uh, my years as a youth were spent in uh, various forms of uh, lockdown from Juvenile Hall to camp to youth authority, and eventually prison. And then it didn't stop in prison, then they put me in the hole. And so every prison I've been in, every juvenile hall, every camp, every YA I've been in, I've been in solitary confinement. I spent probably over 30 years collectively in solitary confinement in one form or another. That has had a devastating impact on my mind, you know, and uh, it's taken arduous struggle and study to cleanse myself of that. And um, even today I find myself with um, symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder um, and things like that. However, I've dedicated myself to the struggle for independence, for freedom and socialism for our people since we've been held in a system of capitalism. In fact, it was our enslavement and colonialism that allowed the system of feudalism to be transformed from that into mercantile capitalism and eventually into monopoly capitalism. So why would we then want to be a part of the system that was made on our backs? Who will we then exploit? And see, that's what we got to understand. You know, I see, I, I go on the internet sometimes, I see a lot of little homies on their, you know, they trying to figure it out too. They trying to understand. People is moving, man, and people is trying to figure out where do we stand. What is our relation uh, in this whole cauldron of struggle? Now, we have to understand this: the system of capitalism is not just an economic order. It's a culture. It's a dog eat dog feeding frenzy on. What can I get? What can I take? 
who can I capitalize on? Whose labor can I capitalize on to make a profit? And that's what capitalism is, capitalizing on someone else's labor exploitation. It also uh, generates various other forms of exploitation, uh, sexism. Uh, it didn't start patriarchy, which is the man is the head and the, the woman comes from his rear. It didn't start that, but it linked into that and now promotes that. And so various other isms flow from that particular thing. And so uh, there's a piece I wrote recently called uh, Pathology of Patriarchy, which can be found at uh, www.kersplebedeb.com slash Sanyika Shakur. And the actual piece is called Pathology of Patriarchy. And the subtitle is Search for Clues at the Scene of the Crime. One thing we're going to have to do is, of course, fight our way out of this. But before we can fight, we have to understand the fight. The fight is not just physical. It's a mental thing. We have to realize that there's no chains on us right now. And yet we're more enslaved today than we were in 1680, 1750. 1820. Why is that? Why do we still continuously go along with the program when obviously the program has been designed to keep us powerless and keep those uh, in the ruling class in power? How do we not get their power, but how do we break their power? That's the struggle. And so I would like to get up in the morning and reach in my pocket and pull out a piece of currency that has Malcolm's face on it or has Asata's face on it or has Denmark Vesey's face on it or General Harriet Tubman's face on it. I'd like to turn on my television and see the president of the Republic of New Africa speaking about our international interest. I'd like to look at an Iraqi person and explain to them, although I live in America, my nation is not at war with your nation. My nation has not been offended by things that they said you've done to America. That's not our war. The Afghani people, we got no beef with. While we don't condone terrorism, if there is such thing, and terrorism is a two-sided thing. If America's calling somebody a terrorist, that's because they've terrorized somebody. When America puts on the books kidnapping, that means that they've kidnapped somebody. How do you think you as an African, you as uh, uh, an Asian, or if you haven't immigrated here, how do you think you got here? By kidnapping. Every law on their books are laws in which they've integrated into their system by things that they first done to people. Overstand that. What they've done is they've ran up the ladder, created every crime on every rung of that ladder, got to the roof, set the ladder on fire, and then says any act that you commit trying to reach this roof is a crime because they don't want us to be in a position of power. And power is what? Power is being in control of your destiny. Freedom is being in control of your resources and your destiny. So once you understand that us as a people are a nation within this empire alone and by ourselves, that we can't rely on the federal government to legislate our freedom into existence. The Civil Rights Act don't mean nothing because you're not a citizen. And this situation is not civil. Civil means peaceful. And there ain't been no peace since 1619 and hundreds of years before that when they invaded us. Let me explain this. Me, I'm a new African. 
And why do I say New African? Because when they captured us on the continent, I may have been Igbo, I may have been Iwe, I may have been Fa, Ga, Fulani, Wolof, Ashanti, Yoruba. I was myself. But as a consequence of them putting us all together up and down the west coast of Africa and transporting us to America with the residue that we had as ourselves, as a people, we combined and became a new African nation in North America. Not American because the Americans were a new European nation. Triple on that. Check that out. The French, the English, the German, the Dutch, they all combined themselves to become a new European nation and they named themselves Americans. That was their human right. Our human right is having the ability to name ourselves, to govern ourselves, to do for ourselves. And on the smallest level, that's what street organization activity is about. But in a lopsided, unconscious way, trip on that. Because street organizations want what in the hood? We want at least one supermarket where we can, our people can shop. We want a park where we can kick it, mile up, meet up, kick it, meetings, picnics. We want at least a junior high school and a high school from which we can draw recruits. We want uh, weapons to defend ourselves and smash our enemies. That's an army. We want sisters who can take care of the children, although that's sexist because men could take care of children as well. But if you understand organization, development, struggle, and revolution, you'll see that banging is but a small microcosm of what we need as a people and this is why we cling so much to bangers because we know that if the bangers already have the idea that fuck America and fuck the laws that we can further develop them into revolutionaries that not just say fuck the law but let's build our own nationalism Revolutionary nationalism, not reactionary nationalism, because rock bottom, Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, they're nationalists, but they're reactionary nationalists. We don't want to be nationalists like them. We don't want to have a nation for nation's sake. We want to be a revolutionary nation. We want to continuously grow and develop our resources for the betterment of not just our people, but people, period. And not no bourgeois democracy. Now, I'm not going to go on too long about this, and this will be part one of part two. But I'm trying to get people to understand that you can't be 50 years old, 45 years old, still standing on the corner doing the same thing that you did when you was 15. You can't do it. If your gang has not developed into a national organization by the time you're 50, you need to do something else. And so at 23, I understood that, which is why I started cleansing my criminal mentality and getting with consciousness, understanding that my heart and my resources of self could better serve us as a whole as opposed to us individually as a set. Not to denigrate or take nothing from the set. The set is what gave me courage. The set gave me discipline. The set taught me understanding of rank and order, now which we call hierarchy. Those things came as a consequence. The set taught me how to shoot, period. I mean, come on. Yeah, I was shooting at other sisters and brothers, but it taught me how to shoot. Now, as karma has come around, I got to go back and make amends. And that's what we need to do. I, I know I'm all over the place here and I ain't got but a couple seconds. But listen, this is part one of part two. Part one of a two point thing. And this is Sanika Shakur, man. And like I said, those who are offended, fuck you. You should be offended because I'm coming and we all coming. So stand on that. We out.